All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to go over how to properly read a GFA or a graphical area forecast. If you come to this weather here in Canada, known as the Aviation Weather website, you'll come to the GFA tab here, and then you're gonna select, select the region you're gonna be flying. Today we'll take a look at the Ontario and Quebec GFA. And it brings up all of our time periods here. You can scroll down to the bottom to see your difference between universal time and your local time. And uh, you'll see the 18 UTC is uh, a five hour difference for me. So it's currently 315 where, uh, where I live. But when we take a look at this GFA, uh, this is the clouds and weather. We always start on the right hand side here so we can see it's the region for Ontario Quebec clouds and weather GFA it was issued the 12th of the first month 2020 at 1725 and it's valid January 12th of 2020 18 Zulu which would be one o'clock local um, it has a legend here going over the different symbols on the chart it gives you a scale of the chart and then some comments which we're gonna gonna touch into um, the basics of a GFA it gives you a, a red scalped area and then within that scalped area it's gonna give you the predominant weather within that region so there's a few different ones here we can see up at the top we have this red scalped area and we have a C um, the, they'll do this when they can't fit the weather in the area. So for the C, we come over to the comments and we see that it is 4,000 broken, 14,000 plus six statute miles of visibility. And there's isolated Alto Cumulus Castellanus topped at 16,000, one and one half statute miles in light snow showers and the ceilings 1,500 AGL. So that's the weather you can expect in this area of C. Um, if we scroll down more to southern Ontario, we have a quite, you know, a large odd shaped scalp area here. Um, the predominant weather in this entire area is going to be your broken 8,000 topped 4,000 foot bottom plus six statute miles. So that's going to be your predominant weather. Extensive ceilings, 1,500 feet AGL. So the extensive is going to be a ratio um, of 75%. Um, they also have isolated, so less common, of cumulus topped at 8,000, two and a half statute miles, light snow showers, and blowing snow, and then 800 AGL. So you'll find that isolated throughout this area. Scrolling down, they have a comment here, uh, northern over the Great Lakes, isolated towering cumulus topped at 7,000 and one statute miles in light snow showers. Coming more to the northeast, over far northeastern section, locally, it's going to have three quarter statute miles, light snow, blowing snow. So they add all this other stuff in here that you're most likely going to see at some point whether it's extensive, isolated, or locally, but the predominant weather is still your broken from 4,000 to 8,000. Uh, in that area, if we come over to the east, more towards southern Quebec, um, the pred predominant weather is going to be on the top, overcast from 4,000 to 20,000, plus six statute miles of visibility. We got some isolated Alta Cumulus Castellanus, topped at 22,000. One and one half statue miles of light snow showers, ceilings 1500 AGL. And then we got some intermittent precipitation, one and one half to six statute miles in light snow. Alto Cumulus Castellan is topped at 22,000, so a little bit larger of a vertical development cloud. Three quarter statue miles, light snow showers, ceilings 800 AGL. So definitely not too nice. A couple other things that we'll look at. On the GFA that you want to be aware of, uh, we have a high pressure area here moving at 30 knots, which is quite fast. 
another high pressure over towards the west. Um, it's weakening, it says, also moving at 30 knots. We have an A, so we can come into the comments and we're going to read broken uh, bottom at 6,000, broken layers topped at 14,000 plus six statute miles. Isolated Alta Cumulus Castellanus topped at 16,000, five statute miles, light snow showers and ceilings 1500 AGL. Uh, so that's how you would read it. We want to look at the isobars and it's representing the lines of equal pressure. Um, they're going to be in a intervals of four millibars. Um, obviously the highest pressure is going to be at your high here. It looks like 1022 and the lowest is on the low of 999. The, the isobars are going to be sig significant. The looking at the space between them. So towards Northern Ontario here, kind of the Hudson's Bay, James Bay area, you can see that the, the isobars are quite close together compared to Southern Ontario, where they're very far spread apart. Uh, the significance is just going to be your strength of the wind. So you're going to see a lot stronger winds towards Northern Ontario. You can see they got a wind dart here and it's 15 knots looking at the feathers gusting up to 25. So a 10 knot gust factor there. And down towards the south, they're not going to have it if it's not strong enough. Uh, we can also see the cold front and a warm front on the low. Later on, that's probably going to go to an occluded front. Area B, we would read the comments to get the weather into there. The low's moving at 25 knots, which is still pretty quick. We have another low over southern Quebec. And the cold front and a warm front. Um, so this was all the one o'clock weather for the clouds and weather. Now we're going to just click over here. We're going to look at the 18 Zulu icing turbulence and freezing level. So not too much going on in northern Ontario. Down to the south, we have some moderate mixed icing from 4,000 to 8,000. You can reference your chart legend here for moderate and severe icing as well as the turbulence. Still got the low pressure in there and it's going to be in this blue area. So this moderate mixed icing from 4,000 to 8,000. We definitely want to look at the freezing level. So this black line is representing zero degrees on the surface, 2,500 feet MSL or indicated altitude. And then it's jumping up to five getting down into the the states there um 5,000 feet indicated so maybe the, the london area they're going to be at the surface um temperatures of zero this is going to be if you're flying down uh, above 2,500 feet and you were down in the states you just want to be aware of that temperature around freezing but something to keep in mind here um, and you can start to correlate these charts is with this icing from four to 8,000. When we go back to our clouds and weather, it's the exact same as your broken four to 8,000. So really what they're saying is if you're in cloud, you're going to get ice. Um, stay clear of the cloud and there's not much of a chance. Um, We'll jump ahead here. We'll go to the plus six and just see how this weather's changing. So now we're on the midnight Zulu. Um, and then we're going to take five hours off of that. So it'd be seven local here for me. And we want to see really what the change has happened. So we know this, the weakening high pressure has seemed to dissipate. We have this other high still moving at 30 knots there. Um, the isobars have spaced out a little bit, so we'll see a die down of wind. Um, and if we're looking back at southern Ontario here, we would get our scalped area. And we're broken from four to 8,000. So the predominant weather hasn't changed. And then we could look into, you know, we got some patchy ceilings of light snow uh, over the northern Great Lakes. Some isolated towering cumulus. Those are producing snow showers, one mile visibility. 600 foot ceiling AGL and over southwestern Ontario we got two statute miles of light drizzle um, and light freezing drizzle we see the crying whale here have a look at your legend that shows freezing drizzle um, 
ceiling's 400 AGL. So it really seems to have deteriorated. The lows also moved towards the east. Uh, and we're going to take a look at the Dyson turbines and freezing level. And we're really going to expect freezing rain here with that freezing drizzle. So we still have moderate mixed, 4,000 to 8,000, same as the cloud layer. And we have local moderate from the surface to 4,000. That's mixed icing due to freezing drizzle. So after 1 o'clock getting into 7, uh, you're also going to be getting ice if you're out in that precipitation. So... Uh, very careful flying in ice, obviously. One, we could also go ahead, look for any comments. We don't see any there. Looking at the plus 12 overnight here. So this would be overnight. Still have the freezing rain. Um, and really quite similar to the previous one. One uh, one other thing I haven't touched on is this orange line represented on the GFA. This is um, a weather phenomena that is obscuring visibility, but it's not due to any precipitation. So it could be like smoke, it could be dust, it could be blowing snow from the ground, but not precip from a cloud. And if we look back at our our 18 Zulu chart, you'll see it right here again over Hudson's Bay. And this one is, you know, within dash line, patchy three quarter to two statute miles visibility. And that's due to blowing snow. So in that region, you can ex expect poor visibility. Um, the plus 12 is also going to give you an IFR outlook. So valid from 06 to 18 on the 13th of January. And it's going to say, you know, there's poor visibility, snow north of Superior, uh, which would be the Great Lake. And it's only going to be on your cloud and weather. So that's pretty well it for the GFAs. When you're looking at the GFAs, obviously staying within your time period of flying, you really want to be familiar with how that weather is trending, which direction it's moving. So... We know as the day goes on, the weather's going to deteriorate. We have a risk of icing and freezing rain, um, and the weather is moving towards the east. So all of that is pretty clear after the review. And we're going to take a look into some METARs and TAF next and relate it to the GFA for a little more specific to the aerodrome. But if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below and I'd be happy to answer those for you.